Welcome to the Branson Woodwind Shop. This is the seventh video in the Coronet restoration project. Today I'm going to chemical clean the Coronet. If you look inside the tubing, you can see some calcium buildup inside of there, and it's not too bad, but it should be cleaned out anyway. This is the bucket that I use to put the small parts in when I chem clean an instrument, and it has holes to let the chemicals in and out. Not everything can go in the chemicals. The valve springs and the water key springs should not go in there. And also on the finger buttons there are some pearls, and the acid eats away at the pearls, so those should not go in there either. Valve stems are made out of brass, so they can go into the chemicals, but a lot of instruments nowadays are made out of aluminum alloy, and they cannot go in there. And these ones are fine to go in there. Usually the valve guides do not need to get chem cleaned, but I'm going to put them in there anyway. And these are some tiny little parts. They do not need to get chem cleaned, so I'm going to put those off to the side. And those have a better chance of getting lost if they go into the chemicals, so I'm going to put those over to the side. And then all the valve slides and tuning slides can go in there. And the valves. When I put the valves and the slides in here, I put them in there standing up, and so that's so that the chemicals can get in there, because if they're upside down like that, then the air will keep the chemicals from going in. So I put those like that. The body of the cornet and the parts are ready to go into the chemicals, so I'll take you to the room where my chemicals are. I'm putting the small parts in the chemicals, and I'll just let those sink down into there. When you put a cornet into the chemicals, and also French horns, you need to make sure that the chemicals get in the crooks of the instrument. I'm going to put on the neoprene glove so that I can put it in there like that, then make sure it goes in the lead pipe, and then I'll get the bubbles out of the other section, and then, now there are no bubbles in there, and I'm going to put it in there with on a hook so that it doesn't get lost in there. And I'm going to leave it in there for about 10 minutes. While I'm waiting for the instrument to soak, I'm going to clean up the little parts that would not go into the chemicals. The parts are really not that dirty. I'm going to clean up the silver parts with my silver polishing cloth. And the parts that are not silver plated, I'm going to clean those up with a rag. I still have a couple minutes before the cornet is ready, so I'm going to show you what my next project is going to be. I have this old Harold trumpet bell that got bent. It's not supposed to look that way. I also have two old cornets and a trumpet, and they're all in very bad condition. So what I'm going to do is take the parts from these three instruments and use that for the valve section for the Herald trumpet, and then I'm going to straighten out the bell. And I have a Herald trumpet here, and this is what it's going to look like when it's complete. So when I get it finished, I will have a pair of Herald trumpets. I'm planning on doing this project next for my Friday videos as soon as I am done with the cornet. And back to the chemicals. I'm going to pull that out. Let the water drain. And then empty out the slides. And here comes the cornet. These chemicals do not make the instrument shinier. They just clean out the scale and the lime that's inside of the instrument. So I'm going to dump the chemicals out and wash that off. I have brushes of many different sizes here, so I'm going to take the one that fits the tuning slide tubes and clean up the tubes. And this just helps to loosen up the junk. The chemicals start the process, and then this helps to clean it out, and then I'm going to run some water through it in a minute, as soon as I'm done cleaning all these out. I'm also going to clean out the tubing on the cornet. This is a very dirty job, but it has to be done, so you just do it. And I'll clean out in the cracks there. 
Now I'm going to get a larger brush and clean out the casings. I also need to clean out the ports and the valves. Now I'm going to wash everything. Watch all the junk that comes out when I run the water through this. There's a lot of junk in there. Oops, I forgot the little side here. There it is. And also, I forgot to use this. I'm forgetting a lot of things today. <laughs> I guess it's because I'm on video right now. And this gets around the corners and the crooks. And I'm also going to use it for this tuning side. I'm not going to use a snake for the small crooks because if you force it in there, it will get stuck. Now I'm going to use the silver dip to clean up the silver plating on the instrument. But these parts are not silver plated, so I do not need to put those in there. I keep my silver dip under the sink, and I need to be careful when I pull it out so it doesn't splash. And there it is. It's a pretty pink color, and it does not smell very good either. You do not need to soak the instrument in the silver dip, you just need to make sure you get all the surface. And that's about all it takes. And I'm going to make sure I get all of that out of there. This stuff is very expensive and you don't want to lose a whole bunch of it when you're cleaning it up. I'll put that in the sink and I'll get the other parts. The silver dip does a good job at cleaning the silver plating, but after you're done, you still need to polish the surface of the instrument. Oh, look at that. That looks really nice. There's gold plating on the inside of the bell, and that came out very nice looking. And also, there's some gold plating on the etching on the bell, and that came out very nicely too. I still am going to need to polish this up quite a bit, but overall it came out very nicely. Again, I'm going to clean up all the tubing with the brushes, and that gets all the chemicals out of there. This is a very dirty job. You can see my hands are dirty. So I'm going to wash this off again, and get all that junk off of there. Although it is kind of satisfying to see all that junk go down the drain. Now I'm going to take all these parts back to my workbench and dry them off. Now I need to dry everything off. I always keep old t-shirts for this purpose. And I just use those to dry them. And also it cleans off some of the stuff that's left on there. After I'm done, I'm going to have to polish this too. There are lots of cracks and crevices on instruments and I'm going to dry all those off. I'm not going to make you watch me dry this whole instrument. It does take a while to dry this all off. So I'm going to turn off the camera and I'll be back with you when it's all dry. I'm done drying the instrument. Now I'm going to clean up the insides of the tubes with a brass brush and I'm going to Use that to further clean up the inside. Usually after you chem clean an instrument, it's cleaner inside, but it's not perfectly clean. So this helps get rid of some of the junk and polish the insides of the slides. After I'm done using the brass bristled brush, 
Then I clean it up with the cheesecloth at the end of a flute cleaning rod. And that cleans off more of the junk inside of there. <clears throat> you can see that the slides are now clean inside. If they were still dirty, I would run it through the chemicals again. But this cornet is not going to need that. I'm also going to do the same thing with the slide tubes on the cornet. It's also important to clean up the inside the casings. So I'm going to take the same cleaning rod and I'm going to wind this up a couple more times so that it's a little bit of larger diameter and run that through the casings. Now I need to polish the instrument. I'm not going to go into too much detail about polishing. If you want to learn more about polishing, I have a video that I did on how to polish a flute and it's very similar to polishing a cornet or any other instrument for that matter. So you can watch that video. I'll leave a link in the description below. I'm going to polish the silver plating on the instrument, but I also need to polish the tuning slide tubes. There are two different ways of doing those things. I'll start with the tuning slide tubes. And the way I do that is I take some wick, and what this wick is, I have a big roll of it. It's used for kerosene lamps. There have been several people that asked me in the past where you can get some of this. I'll leave a link in the description below to where you can get some. I hold one end of the wick in a little vise, and then I put the buffing compound on there. Then I take a slide expander. It's called a slide expander, but I rarely use it to expand slides. Usually I use it to hold slides. So I'm going to hold the slide with a slide expander. Then I take the wick with a buffing compound on it and clean the slides. And then you have to rotate it to get the whole slide. I'm going to put a list of videos that are related to what I'm doing today in the description below. So make sure you look there and see if there are any videos that you might be interested in. And also I'm going to put a link to some of the supplies and tools that I'm using in the video today. I was hoping to get the instrument finished today, but I don't think that's going to happen. I try not to make videos that are too long. So I'm just going to finish polishing the instrument for today, and then next week we are going to assemble it and get the valves working, and then also we're going to make some music on it after it's all complete. I'm not buffing these slides too aggressively. I don't want to take off a lot of material. I just want to clean off the corrosion and make them a little shinier. On a really old instrument like this, you have to be careful about making the slides too loose. You do not want them too loose because then they can fall out or leak. I'm done polishing the tubes. Now I'm cleaning off the buffing compound with a rag. A lot of older instruments that are silver plated have what's called a satin silver finish. And what that is, is they sandblast the instrument to give it kind of a matte finish. And then after they do that, they silver plate it. That gives it more of a dull shine rather than a mirror-like shine. And a lot of people like the way it looks. You polish that the same way you polish the bright silver plating, but it just comes out looking a little different. On the top I have my old cornet with a satin silver finish, and on the bottom there is a more modern trumpet with the bright silver plating. You can see the difference on the plating there. Also the engraving on the instrument has not been sandblasted. What they did is they engraved the instrument, and then they put masking tape over the engraved part, and they sandblasted it. The masking tape protected the engraved part from being sandblasted, and that's why this is more of the shiny mirror-like finish. And when they're done silver plating it, they put masking tape on the silver portion, and then they gold plated the engraving. So it actually took quite a bit of work for them to get the engraved portion of the bell to look like that. Now I'm going to polish the silver plating on the instrument. I have some green cloth. I believe it's used for medical purposes usually, but I'm going to rip a strip off of that. Now I'm going to put some silver polish onto the rag. It does not take that much to do that. I just put a little bit over, over the rag and then uh, rub it around so that it's distributed over the rag. This looks like a table leg, but it's called a wooden assembly mandrel and it's used to hold the instruments out in the open so that they're easier to work with. 
and I'll put that on there and then I'm going to polish. Then I take the rag and polish the instrument with it. And this takes a while to do. I'm not going to make you watch me do the whole thing. I have to get in all the little cracks and crevices on this and it takes quite a while to do that. The bell is the easy section to do. The hard section is the valve section with all the cracks and crevices. It's always nice to do the, this portion where it looks so nice when you're done. Now I'm going to clean between the tubing and the casings and I usually use a spring hook to do that. A spring hook is usually used for woodwind instruments to hook the springs up but it also works well to grab the cloth and pull it through. What you do is you just go in between all the cracks until the instrument is all the way polished and that usually takes a while to do. I'm going to end the video now and I'm going to finish polishing the instrument this week. Next week I'll show you the polished instrument. Also I'll have a good cornet player make some music on the instrument. I hope you have enjoyed the video. Please subscribe for more band instrument repair videos.